Who is Aldrich Kemp? By Julian Simpson. Chapter 3. The Black Windmill. We're about 15 kilometers southwest of Amsterdam, right by Schiphol Airport. We traveled here by train from the city, and now we're walking along the path beside what used to be the Harlem Lake. Sorry, what are you doing? I'm narrating. Okay. Does it bother you? Uh, no. No, it's just new. Up ahead, dark against the grey sky, is the Zwartemolen, the Black Windmill. Okay, wait. Stop. Where are you now? I'm on a train heading to Vienna. No, I mean... Uh, hold on, you're going to Vienna? It's a long story. All right. Well then, could we tell it with some semblance of a traditional narrative structure? You've just dropped me somewhere called the Zwarte... Oh, the d- Zwarte Molen. Yes. I don't know what that is or how we got there. The last I heard, you were in Amsterdam looking for this de Jong fellow. I found him. He was dead. That's how I met Kennedy Fisher. All right. And who is she? I'm an investigator for a podcast. The guy I work with is... He went missing. I've been trying to find him, and along the way, I dug up the name of this de Jong guy, who was supposedly in Amsterdam. And what is the connection between your friend and de Jong? This is going to sound strange. Oh, try me. Have you heard of something called infrasound? Mm, what's that? Mm, interesting. What is? Your left eye twitches when you lie. <laughs> I'm not lying. There it is again. Ah, oh, yes, I've heard of infrasound. <laughs> and just what is it you do for a living, Clara Page? I'm a research analyst. For? I can't say. Well, that tells me plenty. Does it? <laughs> this is so very far from being my first rodeo. Are you with the Department of Works? What's that? Hmm. Either you know and you're pretending you don't, or you don't know. Isn't that true of anything? She asked about the Department of Works. Yeah, what is that? It's not relevant, except insofar as it suggests Miss Fisher should be taken more seriously than I initially suspected. So why were you looking for Dion? I believe he was connected to this man named Conrad Spaker. Have you heard that name? I have not. He's been dead for 12 years, supposedly. But Mr. De Jong was putting flowers on his grave, which is why I went to see him. I think the flowers were some kind of signal. De Jong worked for an organisation called Desvarta Mullen. I don't know what that is. Black something? Yeah, black windmill. We can't find anything on them. We? A friend of mine is helping me out. He's kind of a hacker. So De Jong has something to do with infrasound? He was a scientist working with a guy called Hazlitt on a particular aspect of infrasound. Hazlitt disappeared years ago. There are too many names here. Who's Hazlitt, assuming you're not referring to the early 19th century essays? David Hazlitt. He was supposedly this big boffin working on infrasound, but he disappeared sometime in the late 80s. De Jong was his assistant. And who were they working for? Okay, so this seems to have been before De Jong started working for the Black Windmill. He and Hazlitt were on the payroll of something called the Themis Group, run by this guy called Aldrich Kemp. He's a real shady character who seems to have his fingers in a lot of pies. Oh, he does. Do you know him? Um, kind of. He's the one who put me on to Comrade Spaker. You work for him? No, but he's he's helping us out, I think. Well, I need to talk to him. My only route to him was through De Jong. What is your interest in infrasound? (laughs) You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Tell me anyway. How my friend disappeared. He was in this place called Pleasant Green, which vanished. Vanished? The whole village. Villages don't just vanish. Told you. (laughs) Anyway, I did some digging, and it seems like infrasound technology might allow me to find Pleasant Green again. It's something to do with reality vibrating at different frequencies. This woman is a fruitcake, clearly. Do we know anything about this Pleasant Green business? It's classified. It's an echelon trigger word, so please don't even say it again on this call. Ah, so there's something there. It seems as though Kennedy Fisher has been through some stuff. If she's come into contact with the Department of Works, I've no doubt that's true. But I would prefer that this investigation stay rooted in the real world. Fine by me. The salient point here is that De Jong is dead. He is. And we're both looking for him for different reasons. Different but not unrelated. So the question is... Was he killed because of what he might have told me, or because of what he might have told you? 
Uh, well, not to minimise your involvement in all this, but how many potential podcast interviewees wind up murdered in their living rooms? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Okay. So this black wind... Who's this Conrad Spiker guy? He's, he's dead. He was some kind of far-right nationalist criminal. Sounds fun. And de Young was putting flowers on his grave. Yeah. As some kind of signal? Uh, that's my guess. Signal to who? Aldrich Kemp? I don't think so. Then who? I don't know. I think um, Aldrich was hoping I'd find out. Listen, thanks for talking to me, Kevin D. It's uh, nice to meet you. Wait, 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 wait. We're both looking for the same thing, aren't we? Well, in theory, but... So two heads are better than one, right? I'm sorry, the department I work for... The Department of Works. No. Do you know someone called Parker? I don't work there. We should exchange numbers. I appreciate your help, Kennedy, but I don't think... What's your next move? Um, uh... You see, I don't think you have one. You're a research analyst, right? Of sorts. But you have nothing to research or analyze. I'm an investigator. Complimentary skill sets. Also, I need you to put me in touch with Aldrich Kemp. Well, if I knew how to get hold of him. It's complicated, Kennedy. I'm sorry, but I, um, I have to go. She's on the move. Hello? Yes. So who is this Kennedy Fisher person? She's an investigator for that podcast I told you about. Ah, uh, I may not have been giving you my full attention. All about Pleasant Green. Oh, that's rearing its ugly head again, is it? She seems to think you can help her find it using infrasound. Interesting. Definitely not the top of my priority list at the moment. Sebastian and I are going over to Ji Yong's place. Nikita and Aunt Lily have set up surveillance at the hotel. Don't let Clara out of your sight, Mrs. Boone. They'll take the bait soon enough. Okay, so I'm back in the apartment. This has been weird. So today, I ran into a woman called Clara Page. Or at least that's what she told me her name is. She works for some kind of British government agency. Not the Department of Works, apparently, but I only have her word for that. I ran into her at the de Jong house. De Jong was dead when I got there. It looked like natural causes, but I don't know. And he was my last lead to Aldrich Kemp. Or so I thought. Turns out Clara Page knows Kemp. So maybe I have another way in if I can make it work. De Jong was wearing a key around his neck on an old piece of leather. I was able to grab it before Clara turned up. So now I need to figure out what that key is for. Hello. Eleanor's Kennedy. I need to know if the phrase black windmill means anything to you. I found a key around a dead guy's neck today and it has a windmill engraved on it. Okay, I want you to take a breath, say that sentence back to yourself, and then consider if you're making the best life choices. I'm looking for Matt. I understand, but... (sighs) All right. This is not my area. The Black Windmill are into fringe science stuff, so... Slide and I are drawing a complete blank here, so I'll take whatever you have. Okay, hold on. (sighs) Yeah. Okay, so the Black Windmill was started by a man called Conrad Spaker sometime in the late 80s, early 90s. Spaker was a neo-Nazi with an interest in a whole bunch of wacky theories about reality manipulation. And before you ask, I I don't know what that means either. I'm literally reading from small notes here. Spaker cross-references to Aldrich Kemp. Uh, Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Does it? Uh, Well, not exactly, but I met someone earlier who was sent by Aldrich Kemp to find Spaker. Well, Spaker's dead. He died 12 years ago. That's when his organisation disbanded. Does it say anything about infrasound in your notes? Um, yeah. There's a list of... Oh, I don't even remember what this means. Psychedelics, MK Ultra. So I'm guessing that refers back to the CIA neuroscience experiments in the 60s. Something called Kaleidoscope. That's a British thing, I think. And infrasound. Could you use sound waves to manipulate reality? In real life, or are you thinking of writing a sci-fi novel? (laughs) Okay. Do any of your notes on this relate to Pleasant Green? Well, you can tie everything back to Pleasant Green if you tried hard enough. But no, there's nothing here. But Conrad Baker was a Nazi. A neo-Nazi. What's the difference? Uh, Functionally, uh, not very much. But if you're trying to find a link back to the Thula Society or something so that you can force a connection to... Oh. Ha. What? The Vril Society. What's that? Kind of... Nazis. Uh, 
Yeah, these ones were knocking around in the 1930s and they believed that aliens had set up a base under Antarctica. They vanished into obscurity when the Second World War began, but the group was started up again in the late 90s by a man called Moses Foe. That's a real name? It is. Before he rebooted Vril, he was an associate of Comrade Spaker and part of the Black Windmill. Where is he now? No idea. Kennedy. I know you want to find Matthew Haywood, but is this... I'm chasing down any leads I can. How is this a lead? It's a defunct organisation run by a guy who's been dead for 12 years. I thought you were looking for Aldrich Kemp. I am. And I think I might have a lead on him too. But Kemp is looking for Spaker. So he obviously doesn't think he's dead. And if Spaker's not dead, then maybe he leads me to infrasound. And when you find that, you're going to use it to manipulate reality? Kennedy, are you hearing yourself? This what if infrasound is the key to finding Pleasant Green again? Or Narnia? Or the magic faraway If it's tree. a waste of time, Eleanor, then it's my time. This is how I want to spend it. I was there, in Pleasant Green, and Matt was there too, and then suddenly the whole place vanished and I was standing in a field yeah, and Matt was yeah. gone. Hold on. It's named after a place. What is? I have a clipping here from an old Dutch newspaper. This is when I was looking into this new version of the Vril Society. Oh, I thought this rang a bell. What bell? Your dead man's key. Uh-huh. The Black Windmill was started by Comrade Spaker, but he was already in league with Moses Foe by that point, so they started it together. And in 1988, Moses Foe bought a defunct windmill near Schiphol Airport. The Black Windmill is an actual thing? But it looks like. I don't know if he still owns it or if anyone's been there since. All right, so this key... Presumably opens the door. When I was a kid, my mum told me all these stories about the almost certainly fictional Monaco yacht captain with whom I supposedly share DNA. Mostly, I think she was trying to instil a sense of wonder in me. Distant shores, exotic climbs, that sort of thing. Places she'd never been because a chip shop owner in Penzance knocked her up before she had a chance to see the world. But one of the places she kept coming back to in her mind, because it was a place she'd actually been as a teenager, I think, was Amsterdam. She could talk for hours about the canals and the buildings and the bikes and the trams. And she was pretty good on the history of the place too. I think she always wanted to come back, but she never got the chance. And now my first experience here has involved a graveyard, an obstreperous florist, a strange American woman who seems to think that sound frequencies can alter reality, and a dead guy. And that's where we land, because that got glossed over in the run of everything else. Mr. De Jong, my first corpse. I know, but it's true. Never seen one before. Not really sure how to process it, actually. I can see his face staring up at me every time I close my eyes. And that thing that Kennedy said, was De Jong killed because of what he would have told me? That seems like a burden. If I'd stayed at home, would he still be alive? Did did he have family? Will people miss him? Is it my fault that he's gone now? I'm pretty sure you're not meant to think like this. I suppose to make some pithy quip and move on. And that makes me wonder about all those old Bond movies, back when they were still fun. Sean Connery making a joke over every corpse. Was that a coping mechanism? Were those bad puns his way of avoiding night terrors? I'm not sure that I'm coping very well with this. Who's she talking to? No one. She's monologuing. Why? I don't know. Coping mechanism, probably. Anything? She's in her room, alone. Mrs. Boone has eyes on the corridor. All right. Don't take your ears off her. We're at the de Jong house now. Anything useful, Sebastian? Well, it wasn't a heart attack. Or it was, but... The poison that caused it was injected between his toes. Here. Ingress was through the window. You see? Mm -hmm. Paint scrapings. Someone just jimmied a lock. They got to jump on the poor chap. Sedated him with something fast and nasty. Probably a rag held over his mouth. Shouldn't think there'd be a trace of whatever it is now. Maybe some fibres, but the police will miss that. Socks and shoes off, needle in the foot. Whoosh goes the poison and it's good night, darling. Reinstate the scene. Sharp exit out the back door. Very tidy and professional. 
No flair. No. It's rather a vanilla way to go. Any idea when this was? Oh, a matter of minutes before Clara and this Kennedy Fisher chap showed up, I should think. And the killers didn't take anything? Doesn't look like anything was disturbed, no. Hmm. Uh, fancy a gin? Hmm. Check the price list first, Aunt Lily. Why? Oh, where is it? They've probably hidden it in the welcome folder. <sighs> Why am I looking... Oh, my giddy aunt. Is this in yen? See? Look at that. A tiny little Toblerone. You literally can't buy one this small in the shop. My point exactly. I mean, obviously. It's not that we can't afford it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we could easily afford it. We could buy the whole hotel for cash, but that's not the point, is it? Mm. I find it curious that no matter how rich you are, the minibar prices in these places still feel like you're being mugged. Oh, we're up. Hello? It's not an organisation, it's a place. Kennedy? Or maybe it's both. It could be both, but it's definitely a place. How did you get this number? Ways and means. I don't even... It's what I do, don't get hung up on it. De Young had a key around his neck. What, what are you talking about? On a piece of leather, an old key. You took this? Before you got there. And you didn't tell me because... Because you were being a dick and trying to ditch me? The point is, I looked into the key. It's from the 1700s. Right. It's a windmill key, we think. And I've been looking for an organization, but it turns out Desvarta Mullen is an actual black windmill. Okay, where? Not telling. Uh, why not? Because I know you want to ditch me and I'm not giving you the chance. We can check it out in the morning. Uh, Meet me at Central Station at 8 a.m. No, no, Kennedy, I'm... Can someone explain to me how this Kennedy Fisher person has got closer to finding the black windmill than anyone in the Themis group? She's clearly a resourceful woman, Aunt Lily. As you'd know if you'd listen to the podcast. Thank you, Mrs. Boone. Nikisha, Aunt Lily, you'll be on Clara when she leaves the hotel in the morning. As long as my coffee arrives before she leaves. <coughs> uh, what's that, Aunt Lily? Oh, ignore her. She's got a mouthful of Toblerone. Uh, well, I hope it's not from the minibar. We're not made of money. Tomorrow morning, then, everybody. The game is afoot. No, I'm right in the middle of... No, I have not made it to a museum yet. But um, I, I am looking at windmills. It's a work thing, again. Well, it's a bit complicated. Yes, it's all very flat. <laughs> oh, Mum, I'm with someone. I no, 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 not not like that. I mean, no, no, someone from work, kind of. No, it's a woman. I know you don't mind. I appreciate that, but it's it's not. Okay, then. Yeah, I'll bear that in mind. Yes. Going now. Okay. Bye. We're about 15 kilometers southwest of Amsterdam, right by Schiphol Airport. We traveled here by train from the city, and now we're walking along a path beside what used to be the Harlem Lake. Sorry. What are you doing? I'm narrating. Oh, okay. Does it bother you? Um, no, no. It's just, just new. Up ahead... Dark against the grey sky is the Zwartemolen, the black windmill. Okay, wait. So now we're back to the beginning. Yeah. I met Kennedy at Central Station and we headed out of town towards the airport. She and her hacker friend had somehow discovered that the black windmill was a place. Not an organisation. Well, actually, it's both. But the organisation is named after the place. Originally built in the mid-1700s, the windmill fell into disrepair and hasn't been operational sorry, for... Sorry, sorry, you're recording this? It's my job, I record everything. When you say everything... Yes, including our conversation in the cafe yesterday. Okay, you can't do that. Actually, I can. I just can't use it without your permission. Okay, well, can we be clear that you absolutely do not have my permission? Sure. Your loss. Shall we get back to the matter at hand? Well, as long as we're clear. And we are. Good. Okay, then. According to what we were able to dig out... This mill was purchased a few years ago by a shell corporation inside a dozen other shell corporations. We managed to follow the trail back as far as the third Lithuanian bank, and then it went cold. The mill is listed as having been decommissioned. And yet the sales are turning. They are. We stumbled upon some huge illegal flour grinding operation, you think? Yeah, I'm sure it's something like that. Nice and close to the airport. Whatever this is, I'm sure that's not a coincidence. 
There's no one around. Good or bad? No idea. I don't think we should go in together. No. One of us should hang back. Yeah. In case there's trouble. Yeah. Good, good. Same page. I'll go in. No. This is kind of my thing. Mine too. You want to toss a coin? No, I'm going in. So much for democracy. I protect it, I don't practice it. What time do you have? Uh, 9.23. Okay, 9.30, you've either heard from me or there's a problem. In which case, who do I call? Honestly, whoever you would normally call. So far, your people have been a lot more effective than mine. Okay, um, I'm going to hang back here. I can see the door. You need me, all you have to do is wave. Okay, got it. Good luck. Yeah. Clara? What? You want the key? Who has eyes on Clara? I do. She's heading to the windmill. Akisha? Sebastian and I are further along the shore. We can be there inside a minute. You don't want to get closer? They can't. Kennedy Fisher has Overwatch. Overwatch? She's not perched on a roof with a sniper rifle, Mrs. Boone. There's no one else around. No people, no vehicles. Do we like the look of this? We do not. Okay, stand by. Oh, there's something really strange about this. Almost like a crackle of electricity in the air. Oh, there's no birds. That's what it is, no birds, no insects. Something's keeping them away. That is not traditionally thought of as a promising sign. Well, I'm completely up for hearing arguments as to why I shouldn't walk into this place. (laughs) Nothing? Great, thanks so much. Moment of truth. It's a windmill. It's just a windmill. There's nothing here. Oh no, wait, what's this? Steps down. Hmm. Well, this probably isn't a good idea. Some kind of storage area for grain, or no, I don't really know how windmills work. Pretty sure most of them don't have biometric security doors. There's clearly something here. But I'm going to need expert help if I'm going to. Oh, I've been expecting you, Miss Page. You should have called for backup. Hindsight's 2020. It's not hindsight, it's standard operating procedure. Yes, well, lesson learned. Talk to me. There's nothing to say, nothing's happening. Wait. Kennedy Fisher has her phone in her hand. Well, that's exciting. Or interesting. Hello? Aldrich Kemp. Oh, I'm sorry, I think that you have dialed the wrong number. I know it's you. My name is Kennedy Fisher. Oh, from the podcast. My housekeeper's a big fan. I keep meaning to subscribe. Clara Page is in trouble. How did you get this number? I have a friend who... It wasn't easy. Clara said if she wasn't out by 9.30, I should call for help. And you called me. I'm flattered, Miss Fisher, but the situation is in hand. I can assure you. Ah! in there. Clara's down, Aldrich. They blew the whole place up. Is it boom? There was a whole complex underneath there. That's where the explosion came from. What kind of complex? A bunker. Concrete and steel. It was a server farm. Mm. Been giving the stuff they've been pulling out of there the once over. It's all fragments of server casings. Interesting. Where's Kennedy Fisher? Gone. As soon as it happened. Oh, that's a shame. You didn't get an autograph. Which does remind me, kill all my phone numbers and run a check on our security, would you, Sebastian? Mm. Random podcasters really shouldn't be able to call me on my mobile. You're taking this well. 
Oh, Clara's not dead, Nikisha. This was all a big distraction to whisk her away from us. It's an expensive distraction. Indeed. Very expensive. Which tells us two rather troubling things. One, Conrad Spaker is still alive. That's not possible. I fired a coin into the back of his head. Yes, that usually does the trick. But this black windmill business has Conrad Spaker's fingerprints all over it. What's the second thing? Time and effort. Technically two things, but I think Aldrich was attempting to complete... Uh, thank you, Sebastian, yes. I believe this whole thing was a rather elaborate trap. As you pointed out, Nikisha, this was a very expensive distraction. A lot of time and money up in smoke just to abduct one research analyst. Only one thing would make it worthwhile. I'm afraid they know who she is. Hello, this is Eleanor's phone. Leave a message and I'll call you back. Eleanor, it's Kennedy. Oh, the whole black windmill thing went sideways and I'm getting out of Amsterdam immediately. I've got the name of a journalist who was apparently looking into Pleasant Green a while back. His name is Edwin Lillybridge. I'm wondering if you know him? I'm heading back to London to track him down, so can you call me back if you have anything? Okay, thanks. I'll see you soon. We have the package. Is she in one piece? I'm very careful with valuable cargo, Mr. Bartholomew. Payment has just been made to your account as arranged. And when you're done, you'll kill her? Certainly, Mr. Bartholomew. As you wish. In Chapter 3 of Who is Aldrich Kemp by Julian Simpson, Clara Page was Phoebe Fox, Mr. Bartholomew, Tim McInerney, Aldrich Kemp, Ferdinand Kingsley, Mrs. Boone, Nicola Walker, Sebastian Harcourt, Kyle Soller, Nikisha Kemp, Carla Crone, Aunt Lily, Susan Jameson, Kennedy Fisher, Jana Carpenter, and Stephen McIntosh was Conrad Spaker. Who is Aldrich Kemp was recorded on location in Hove, London, and at the Royal Pavilion in Brighton. The music was composed by Tim Elsenberg. Sound design was by David Thomas. The director was Julian Simpson and the producer Sarah Tombley. The executive producer is Karen Rose, and it is a Sweet Talk production for the BBC.